Yeah, hi, my name's Joe Brunette. We're racing here in Lisbon, New Hampshire today. Um, got a 340 Ski Doo here, 603. Got some sponsors Vermont, Ty Mile Tavern, Lego Snowboards in Southampton, New Hampshire. We got Bridge Road Bait and Tackle in Salisbury, Mass. And uh, WJ Brunette Landscape Construction. Nice. We're here in Lisbon. They got a beautiful track here, and uh, we're going to give it hell. Good. How about these other sleds? Any thoughts on these? Or? They're all, these are all, been all restored and uh, they're all just ready to go. This one here is a, probably the fastest sled up here and uh, if that's a 340. And then uh, the one next to it, these are uh, first and second place sleds in the uh, qualifier. And uh, I'm not sure where Jason ended up. I think he was third here. A lot of competition here today. Nice. Perfect day. Perfect weather. Where's Timmy Billadu? We, we need an interview for the um, vintage. Jason was second. Second, my bad. Sure. All right. Nice. So, yeah. Cool. Thank Thanks you so a lot much. For your time. Nice meeting you. Thanks a lot. All right. Go cool. vintage. Yes. Hi, my name's Greg Worth. Uh, we're racing uh, my 1974 Artifact Cheetah with 440 Kawasaki in it. We changed some things from originally on it. We've got the 36 millimeter Macuni carb on it. Put a rubber track on it. Got a Skidoo suspension under it. Um, Today's not the best day. Things have been better before, but that's sure. the way it is at times. Sure, you win some, lose some, right? Yeah, you win some, lose some. It's getting pretty, going to get pretty warm here right now. Sure. Uh, but uh, for the most part, they're, they're good old sleds, and we have a good time playing with them. Nice. So, well, good. Thank you. Hey, no problem. I'm going to take some shots of it if it's all right. Oh, yeah. Don't look too close. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's all good. I love the cheetahs and panthers from the mid-70s. I mean, I love all the vintage snowmobiles, but those are my favorites. We had a 72 Cheetah when I was a kid. Yep. I had a 73 and a in this one. Nice. My name's Joe Becker. These are my five sleds that I brought over to range. So, the white number one is one I run, and the 116 is one that I run. The other is friends of mine race them. And, uh, we're going to try and at least finish. <laughs> we, uh, we struggle sometimes with keeping them going. So. Sure. But we're just here to have fun. Nice. Maybe you can answer this question for me. I think it was 71 or 72, the entire Ski Doo lineup had a white stripe on the hood. Do you know anything about that? Uh, I think it might have been 72, but I could be wrong. Yeah. That, that one, the number six, was a 72, 55. And this one here, the one down there is the black in the middle. That's a 71. Gotcha. Okay, we can start right. lining up the first two well, main cool. events. Well, I appreciate it. It was nice to Thank meet you. you. You too. You tend to... Okay, if I get footage of the sleds? Yeah. Cool. Sure. I think I met you earlier. How you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Doing? Good. What's this, a citation? Yeah. Nice. With like an MXZ seat? Nice. I like it. That's probably a lot more comfortable with that seat, isn't it? Do you feel like talking it up? Do you feel like talking it up on a camera? I don't think it will. No, no, but I mean, do you want to talk about it on camera? Well, it's my sled. Just see how, like, my name is, and this is my citation. Yeah, Jim Venom, I built this. You can see everything's for lightness. I got it down. This sure. What year is the citation? 79. It's got an 84 suspension track on it. A lot of fun. I'm nice. Not doing, I'm not running it today. I'm running the 440 today. Now, what's this sled here? Is that it's a Polaris? It's a Polaris 440, and I'm running that in the senior class. Really? Nice. I'm on this one with 340. They said, no, you can run a 440 fan. Really? So I swap my skis out, and I run that one. I hit plastic skis on that. They wouldn't let me run the plastic Has to be steel, huh? Nobody leaf spring only? Basically stock leaf spring. Sure, let me go around and check. I made them, they're very good. Oh, you did? Oh, I did put bottoms on them. Wow, plastic skis with leaf springs, that's cool. Yeah, they went good on that. Nice. Now, what's this, a cutlass? A cutlass? What is that? Uh, SS. SS, okay. Nice. So, this is the one you're racing today? Yeah, pulled a second in the first race, right behind this guy. Nice. Sweet. That was one of the first races, right? I think I saw it. He, he, he might have been in it. Okay. To make the field. Let's get it going. Nice. Well, thank you. This is the senior class, 15 over. Senior class, yeah? 
Cool. Well, nice okay. meeting you. I appreciate it. Is this yours? No. No? Cool. Nice slides. Thank you. How's it going? I'm Jared Ainsworth. Uh, racing my uh, Articat Panther 340 here today. Uh, it's my dad's Articat Panther 440, same thing. Uh, I'm running three classes. I'm running 340 free air, 340 fan cooled, and I'm also racing the 340 in the 440 class. Just something to do, fun, run a couple classes. Uh, I travel a lot for work, so this is probably my last race of the year. I don't get to race much. Uh, Dad's running the 15 over class. Uh, he's killing it today with that. I'm struggling a little bit on the straightaways. The deep snow's bogging it down pretty hard, but uh, I think I'll ride a little harder and make a few adjustments. The features will be pretty good. Probably going to end up with a couple podiums. Good. What happens. Should be a good time. Good for you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Nice. Which is like a 69 or? 70. 70, yeah. Nice. That's a nice shape, isn't it? It's a nice example. There's other one right over there. It's only got 80, 86 original miles on it. The Capri or the Snow Jet? Really? Nice. Wow. 81 miles. I recognize that. I was there. How's it going? What year is that Puma? 72. 72? Nice. We had a 72 Cheetah when I was a kid. Yeah. Great year. 73 I'm building. Is that right? Cheetah, yeah. I have a motor built for right now. Nice. 440. Nice. And I'm building another one of these. I took a full size cat and cut it off, put a Puma track on it. Not this one. The other one I'm building. Okay, yeah. yeah. Nice. I do a uh, video magazine about vintage snowmobiles. Oh, yeah. I got one of them. Oh, you I do? I you the other day. Oh, last weekend. In Washington, Lancaster. Washington. Oh, Washington. A couple yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. Colder in hell. It sure was. Jeez. Snowing like crazy, too. Snowy and windy and cold. This is a lot better today. Yeah. Now, are you the one that had the uh, Citation SS? Right there. Yeah. Okay. I was wanting to get some footage of that oh, that day. Yeah. Are you open to talking that up? I'm not going to talk it up. No. no? Okay. <laughs> That's all right. Talk it down, maybe. Talk it down. <laughs> all right, if I get some footage of it. The other one's better. 
No, you take Is that like a 69 or something? 69 bubble black dot, yeah. Nice. Now, is this an 81 or an 80? 80. 80. Yeah. Good shape. Yeah, I remember liking those. I was in high school when these came out. I really liked them. Yeah, they're oh, yeah. dirty on the way here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I really remember liking these when they came out. And then, of course, the blizzards <laughs> came out there. The blizzards, A couple yeah. of years before. They were heavier. Yeah. And these were snappy for the size of them. Yeah. And then a few years later, my dad got a uh, Citation 4500. It wasn't as sporty as this. It didn't, oh, have the, yeah. didn't have the twin car, but it was it was nice. You could hang the track out, hang the tail end out, you know. How long have you had this? Third year. Three yeah. years, yeah. Three years, nice. Have you restored it at all, or is that original? Or? Oh, original, except the jack shaft, chain case. When we got a chain case, was broke out of it. I had to take the motor off, chain Changed all the chain case, jack shaft, wow. cleaned it all up. <laughs> Got hours in it, yeah. I'll bet, yeah. No, now, are you racing no. that today or no, just showing we that? Or? we ain't racing it, no. Just showing we it? One to always put a long track on it, but we never did. Oh, like a 4500 track? Yeah, longer. Yeah. yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. And then this is a 69 here. How'd you make it out? First. First? Yeah. Wow, congratulations. Thanks. Cool. What's your name? Luke. Luke, nice to meet you. You too. Now, you probably see this coming, but were you using the forest, Luke? <laughs> <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Not today? You didn't need it? No. Nope. Nice. Yeah, I do a video magazine about vintage snowmobiles. Oh, cool. And uh, this will probably be in the next edition. Sweet. Cool. What, what year is this? 73. 73, nice. Yeah, rubber track. Not, oh, really? No cleats, huh? 73 lengths. Yeah, stop this way. Nice. Yep. There's a single cylinder? Or? Yeah, 340 hertz. Wow, nice. Good for you, man. You took it, huh? Yeah. Good for you. Yep. I like that TX. Yeah, he's going to run, run it in the demolition derby at the end of the, <laughs> end of the race. Nice. End of the day, right, Tom? He'll probably do well. Those were tanks. We had one when I was a kid. It was we had a 250TX, and it was it was tough. I was a teenager, and it took everything I all the abuse I gave it. The only free as it didn't blow up on a regular basis was the fucking yeah. Polaris 250s and 340s, 440s. Yeah. Now is this a 76? Eight. 78. Yeah. Nice. That's all. Good. That's all good. Done all original, huh? Yeah. Nice. So we got original chrome plating and all that. So I bought it running. I think I can test. I think I'll just leave it alone. Good. <laughs> so what is it, 340 or 440? 340. 340. Nice. I put an Indy suspension in it. Double run of carbides. That gives us some bite. Warmers. Huh? Oh, yeah. Nice. And I wanted to ride the trail. Yeah. That sucker goes pretty good. It does. What is that, a pull-up? Was he just on the track or getting ready to go on? I don't know. Which, uh, which side do you need to do? The oh, yeah. line there? 
Uh, Facebook one? Yeah, Vintage Snowmobile Lovers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see your stuff all the time. Nice oh, to good. meet That's you. Oh, good. That's me. Yeah, I'm Mike. Hi, Mike. Nice My to meet you. Nice to meet you. Sweet, yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, I hope you see your stuff all the time. Good. Nice. Yeah, it's the largest vintage snowmobile page on Facebook. All almost right. 50,000 fans. Awesome. And I think it's the largest community of vintage snowmobile lovers anywhere. Nice. Because 50,000, that's a lot of people. That's a whole shitload of people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I see. I, I mean, I, you know, follow it. So. Nice. See all the posts. Stewart's New Hampshire. Uh, these are my daughters, Sophie and Sienna. They both race in the uh, vintage races for the uh, Elizabeth today. Sophie runs an Alouette 340 Super Group. She took a third place today. And my other daughter, Sienna Grandin. She runs a 120 mod. She got it first place today. Nice. You want to come a little closer? We can get a look at that trophy. Nice, very nice. Congratulations, both of you. Thank you, thank you. That's cool. How about a picture of the two of you holding your trophies up? Is that over here? Yeah. There we go, yeah, nice. Oh, let me get it focused. Yeah. So what are your thoughts, girls, about today? Any thoughts about the races or vintage snowmobile racing in general? Very good. The track was nice. Yeah. Good. And you guys like vintage snowmobiling? Yeah. You're going to keep this sport alive? Yep, yeah. Good, good. We're counting on you. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. Thank you. So this is my green broken ski. Uh, I broke in my heat class, but I still came in first. Wow. So even with a broken ski? Yep. Holy, holy we cow. Replaced it. We replaced yeah, my dad, he fixed it. Okay. Sweet. So to make sure I understand, you, you, uh, it was another run after the, the ski was replaced that you won? Yes. Okay. So once that broke, you were pretty much done in that oh, race? Done. Yeah. Done. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Now, how did that feel when that came off? Was that pretty hard? I didn't really feel it, but... She was crying. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, did the sled get all no, weird on you? or? knocked the wind right out of her. No. She hit the bale. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, it, it, it turned you into the bale? Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, she went, she went flying. But you still she came home with the gold. Yeah. I swallowed the snow pretty hard. Holy cow. But yeah. you came home with the gold, right? Yep. Good. That's all that matters. Well, cool. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Mike with the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast. Today, we're going to spend some time with one of the great snowmobile racers of the 70s, who later went on to do some NASCAR racing. I'm talking about the great Tim Bender. Now, since racing is not my strong suit, I've asked my friend Paul Belfay to join us. Uh, Paul is the perfect person to join us because he is a collector and enthusiast of Yamaha racing snowmobiles of the 70s. So, Let's listen in on the conversation between Tim and Paul. Uh, thank you, Tim, for some time today with us to talk to you your involvement in snowmobile racing. Sure. Obviously, you are well-known in the snowmobile racing family and as a Hall of Fame of snowcross and ice oval snowmobile racing. But Paul, I'd like to ask you, where did the number 19 come from? Yeah, I was a car racer in uh, western New York, Buffalo, New York. And he was number 19, and it came from there. My, my brother had number 19, and I, I died. So it, it came from my dad. Oh, that's cool. I wondered yeah. where that number... I always wondered where numbers come from for people that put them on the car. That's cool. Yeah, your actually, age. No, no. no when I you was, started uh, racing. I was, I was, I was starting, starting around 16. But, uh, oh, great. My, my gra I'm a third racer, my son being fourth generation. But um, I actually used to build race cars. He was a, um, an engineer of sorts. And then my new race car driver, and I was racing too. Nice. Yeah. Well, now I'd like to ask you about your racing sleds of the seventies through the nineties. Uh, what sled gave you advantage to put you on the podium? Um, Yamaha's, the, the TSS on Yamaha front suspension worked good because it, uh, it it naturally didn't roll as much as regular independent front end would roll, 
and uh, the natural is it's working good in oval racing. We put it, add a sway bar to it, and um, that was the first Yamaha's in uh, 1974 was my first year, and uh, I had a 292 single, and uh, I don't think I made made a fine year, but I had most most fun I ever had that year probably. <laughs> it also did the least amount of work on it, but uh, the uh, it grew into uh, racing the, the TSS sleds, and then later on the independent. Oh, great, great. Now talking about winning your winning sleds, your, uh, the V Max. Um, obviously, with the uh, SRX, you raced a little bit with. The Exciter, and then obviously the VMAX 4 that in the oval racing. Um, yes. Uh, also I built. A, I raced a, a, early on, seven, or 1984, I think we raced it there, in uh 56 class. It would be stock, but you do anything you want with the chassis. It was an open chassis. <clears throat> so we had a modified phaser. Actually, before that, we had SR5, 82, 83, raced an SR5, and then started building sleds for, for Yamaha, too. We built a uh, Yamaha the wide, at the time, to be able to 50 sleds would be legal for the class. And uh, Yamaha built wide front end chassis for the SR5, and we built a vendor racing, built the uh, sway bar for it, and it would be legal for the stock, and we built 50 of them. And then that was a uh, no production to uh, stuff for Yamaha, and the next year we built the Yamaha Phaser SX. Um, it was an 80. We built 50 of them. The only problem was is that they did so well that they just, the minimum build to be 250. So that kind of put me out. Of, I couldn't build 250 of them in my shop. So it kind of was a bummer for us for sure. But uh, Phaser SX won a lot of races. Yes, it did. I uh, in that sled. That that was a great sled. But let's back up, Tim. In uh, 82, Yamaha came out with the SRX 500, and you raced one, I think, in a minute. Uh, what did you think of that snowmobile? It was a, I thought it was a great sled. I actually did a lot of testing for Yamaha out in Montana in high altitude. I used to put on 150 miles a day, just, just pound 82 SRX 500. <clears throat> and uh, we got one, and uh, I raced it at the Pontiac Silver Dome. I mean, one with remember where it went, but it was, it was a little finicker, finickier. Yeah, is that a word? Finicky than a uh, than an '81 SRX, which was plenty finicky. And Yamaha had had so much trouble with the '81 SRX, they bought them back from the from the uh, the dealers and uh, and uh, destroyed them. <clears throat> and the SRX 500 they built, man, they ended up never sure. They actually cut the struts out the SRX 500 sleds. For me to use on the to build a, 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 a but uh, it was a sled. It just was a little bit finicky. Now that sled you raised, it, Pontiac. Did you widen the front end on it? Yeah, I had a wide front end on it. With also had a long traverse suspension in it, which we built. Uh, <clears throat> was a, at the time it, had, it came with about three and a half inches, and uh, we made it an extra seven inches of travel. And, nice. Wow. So that, how much horsepower do you think that, like 100? Um, I don't know Dino at that time, but uh, probably uh, 100 or so, maybe, just. Right. Tell us about your custom-built sleds you sold to consumers like the um, the Outlaw and the Phaser SX. Can you tell us a little bit about each of those sleds? Yeah, the Phaser SX was, was, was base Phaser. We took an 84 phaser, put up, uh, took out the 112 track, put a 121 in it, length it out the rear of the tunnel, um, cut the struts off the front end and put 500 struts on it, widen the front end and out, the sway bar on it, um, put cold air to breathe cold air from the outside and then exhaust the, the hot air from the outside hood. And then uh, what we did was we had a system where we bring five into the shop at a time and cut the bottom of the crate. Well, there was a wooden crate at the time. And uh, about five at a time and I filled them, each one of them up you could. Then we I crated them back, shipped them back to Yamaha. Yeah. We painted them and they were, they were uh, 
red and silver, and, and I signed the hood on them, and each one of them, and um, that was a phase. Right. Um, and then we built it. Next year, we now when Yamaha or when ISR changed their rule, five hundred or building. Sorry, I spoke before, but uh, it was five hundred they had to build. So when Yam- when ISR changed their rule to five hundred, we uh, we decided on our own for to sell ourselves. So it was called the Outlaw. 82 SRX, or I'm sorry, SRX, new ones of those, yeah, not sold. I bought those from them. We took the engine out, put that in the uh, the uh, phaser with a white front end and sway bar and all on track, just like we did on the phaser SX. Yeah. So basically it was a phaser SX VMAX 540 engine. Wow. Um, How about the Terminator? Uh, we went to the five, the, uh, oh, uh, we, we, uh, we used new engines out of the 83 SS40. Um, Terminator was a exciter based sled, and then sway bar, um, and then twin pump, and uh, different carburetor, bigger carburetor. And then the last one we built was a uh, was an avalanche. Uh, we took a took we built uh, 20 avalanches, I think. Um, they were a Send the motor to the crankshaft. Friend of mine, Larry, I did it at the crankshaft. Motor cut half it down the middle of one cylinder. Took another engine and cut down the middle of it. Welded them together, made a three. And then we then he built. We called the bucket in the side. The clutch didn't hit the side panel. We had to extend the side panel out. And uh, or CC. And uh, that, that thing was a rocket. I built one of those for 25 of them. My dad bought one and. Uh, he decided it was too fast for him. He gave it back to me. Um, yeah, some of those floods around today still still running. Um, um, a few guys, uh, John Bertolino was one of the ones that took up my old stuff, Emax fours and and phaser reflexes and outlaws and such. So. Well, that's great. Old race sleds, any of them? No, I don't. I uh, I should should have kept one, but I kept, should have kept a couple of them, but I don't. The only thing I have is I had one a TSST, a triple ski single track, which was a uh, Formula One sled that we built with a Yamaha motor in it and uh, racing we were only. I had showed the, to uh, to Gordy Metz from Yamaha, funded building of it, and racing race one race was all I was contracted to do, so we raced it. That was it, but. It was a uh, that was a neat sled. I had that one until ten years ago, and then. Did it do at Eagle there. River? Um, it was great around the corner. I had the second highest speed that there anybody ever. But they was terrible. It was, just, it was built by a company in Michigan. And they I built the chassis. They they built it for some for some twin tracks. They put them Yamaha motors in too, and uh, none of them ran very good. So it was kind of a. Bit of a, bit of the that size motor was that? It was a 500, VMAX 500. Oh, okay. It was a 500. It was made to run at about 79. We were turning at 10,000. Yeah, it was wow. just shook, shook the thing apart. We went through a couple of engines. And, uh, <laughs> but it was it sure, sure went around the corner there. But, uh, yeah, I've seen that brochure. Yeah. I sat, sat on the track. And it was a ski off to the right hand side of me. And then uh, with a in suspension on it, and then we had honey for it, and uh, I was way offset. And it, it didn't come out of the hole the greatest, but it, it sure cornered good. Wow, that's great. Well, Tim, tell us a little bit about your secret and advantage over the other guys. I know you didn't have a lot of horse over the years with your motors, but you had an advantage doing it due to your sleds to, to make them perform. Um, a lot of hard work and, and driving the hell out of it. <laughs> I uh, I had a, had a rule of thumb that everybody else let off, and then I wouldn't let off way after they let off. And the the cord was was so with the Yamaha, and I we met, my riding style matched well with the Yamaha. Uh, um, we had a in the bottom we built a all up the holes that hold the, the ski, and then machine them at different angles so we could change, adjust the camber and. Uh, that and uh, we designed it. It worked very really well, and then on the Yamaha too. Um, those are, those are, it was around the corners so good. 
I see. How about that little leather limiter strap? Yeah, that was a Kickstarter, we called it. A lever that, with it, with it unlocked, or let's call it open, it was up in the air. Uh, where you, where you were right, and when you caught a hole, the, limiter, the front limiter strap would be longer, and you would let you, or, and before I got to the corner, I'd stomp it down and lock it all the way down. And then strap up and so I could run the back of the track. But it, it turned. That way I could run a lot more studs with that than, uh, than you could without, without it. Wow, what a what you had there. Oh, and, and before I let you go, tell us about the the VMAX 4 sled. I, I saw it perform, and you were almost lapping the field at Vel. It was unbelievable. Yeah, we uh, had Velcor that year, having a heck of a time blowing tracks, and Mike Sack was my teammate in one of our sleds, and he blew a track, and when it came out of the sled, it clawed the rivets off the back of the Next side of the board, the steering bolt on the bulkhead. We didn't know it changed track, and he was racing. And he, uh, steering broke on the bottom of the, all broke off the chassis, and he lost control and went into the corner. 100, we run 109 on the up there, the hill bell court, and, uh, to the corner and went one way, and he, well, he followed it into the pay bill and had it, uh, in a the, the bad spot, and, uh, he was out for it. But that, that stuff was so fast, it was uh, actually the only thing that ever scared me was that thing. Wow, and uh, you know, everything you build, it seems ISR or USSA, they just stopped you the next year done. <laughs> they didn't even let that race. Well, that sled uh, was banned, uh, right? Yeah, they, 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 Polaris got the scooter, they decided they wanted to. Yamaha was a member of ISR, so the boarding rights, and they took from 800. Eight, eight, Actually, there's no limit on the CC and the 600 CC, which we took Yamaha VMAX 4 and, and cut off one cylinder out of it, and that's still around running today, too. But uh, we we never raced it, that'd be production based. And, and oh, wow. And Yamaha was interested in the 600. They penalized you every time, and I felt bad for you. Yeah, that and uh, VMAX 4. That sled, that sled would go, didn't it? That VMAX. Man. Yeah, and it was only 750 if we made it 800. We were we were approximately 170 horsepower with it. Um, we were, and uh, if we would have went to, to 800, we would have been 200 horse. Wow! So it would have been it would have been fun. Unbelievable. Well, Tim, thank you. Working with you about the racing, and I'll I'll turn this over to Mike. So this is Mike again. I'd like to thank Tim and Paul for having this conversation. I was able to ask Tim a few more questions, but sadly the audio quality was not very good. So hopefully we can have another conversation with Tim at some point in the future. So that is it for now. But thanks again to Tim and Paul for having this conversation. And thank you also to everyone who has taken a few minutes to listen to this conversation. Lastly, don't forget to tune in to the Vintage Snowmobile podcast every Thursday evening on the Vintage Snowmobile Lovers Facebook page. Have a great day. Today on VintageSnowmobileLovers.com, we're in Lancaster, New Hampshire at Crane's Snowmobile Museum. And our good friends Mitch, Midge Rosebrook and Paul Crane are just about to give us a tour of the museum. How are you doing, guys? Good, good. Good. Before we get started, Paul is the first person in the U.S. ever to ride a snowmobile. Do I understand that correctly? A skidoo. A skidoo, okay. A skidoo only. I skidoo. wasn't the first to ride a snow machine. I'm the first one to ride a skidoo. Nice. American. and First American to ride a skidoo. Nice. In Canada and here. Excellent. Not many people can lay claim to that. I don't believe so. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> awesome. start down this this row here all right uh, everybody can understand what the uh, just by looking at them what they are so we'll go down this row here first and then we'll
On the end wall here, we have some some of the clothing. Most of them are practically mine in the family that wore that road things. All right, so these are yours from back in the day, you lot, and your family? A lot of them are. <coughs> I would say that 80% of them are. Nice. And at the end here is a Scatmobile, which was rare. It's got three real big bloom tires. It's made, it was made out in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and I met the guy years ago, and he was driving a Stanley steamer up his driveway, and I told him I just picked one of those up, and I'm going to start a museum someday, and he said, I'm going to give you something, young man, something that nobody has. My first sign that was put on the factory. And it's a plywood sign. It's a little rough, but I was going to cut the bottom part off or it's rotten, but I just figured it would lose the value of it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Wow, that is awesome. That's quite a gift to receive. Yeah. Outstanding. Cool. Then I got patches on the back wall. Oh, yes, yeah. Patches on the back wall. And Let's see if I can get in a little closer on that one. <clears throat> and up on the rack over here, we got some of the small snow machines. I remember the kitty cat from back in the day. Yeah. Then we got the 1926. Model T snowmobile, which is a foot narrower than the average snowmobile, and if you look at the running board, it says snowmobile right on it. Really? Which is rare. Right here on the step? Yeah. Wow. And what year was this, Paul? You said 1920-something? 1920 1926 is the plate. Oh, yes, yeah. Wow. I usually give rides when the snow is deep. I haven't done it this year yet, but I will be. Nice. And then some more mini sleds mini up top. Mini sleds on the top. And then over in the corner here we have some, some more mini snows plus a couple old sleighs. Nice, and then these are some of the early mass-produced ski This is a 61 skidoo with the wooden skis. This is a 61 skidoo with the replaceable steel skis because the wooden ones, we'd go out in the field and we'd break them. Huh. Wow. Now that first sled that you rode, was it similar to this one? Or just like that. Just like this one? Yeah. Wow. But it was a 1960. 1960, okay. I have one, but I haven't got it over here yet. Okay. Really? Yeah. Wow. That one has got 200 and something miles on it. Unreal. That's a nice shape. And I think they stopped making those in what, 2005 or something? They stopped. The Elite? 2004 or 5, I think they made a silver one. Yeah. yeah. A much more modern looking one. Yeah. Was that the last year, do you know? Yeah. It was, okay. I like that TNT. I the old silver. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, I see a, a shift lever on that. Did that have reverse? Yes, reverse. Yeah. Nice. And did it have like a low gear for? No, it's yeah, just the regular. Just the reverse? Yeah. Okay. But it's, it's mint. It's only got 200 and something miles on it. Nice. A buddy of mine growing up had a silver bullet like that. Yeah. Then we got the 
Then we have the 64 tin cab motor ski. Wow. Which they didn't make very many of them. Then a 65 motor ski. Then the racing motor ski, which is a 64 Hurricane. And then this here was a 500 racing sled. Okay. Apparently, so I've been told, the factory had it. Yeah. Motor ski factory had it. Wow. That's cool. And then the Zephyr, which is all original. Wow, 1970, yeah. I remember these Nuviks back in the day. Yeah. My father's friend had one just like that. Then a pink motor ski that was made from a friend of mine for his daughter. Wow. That is cool. You don't see those every day. No. It's got some ski spreaders on there too. Yeah. Keep it stable. His daughter wanted it pink. Nice. And this here is a rare 240 motor ski bullet. Oh. And the 340 Sonic, Supersonic, Sonic Pro, Pro Sled. Then the Racing Northway. They may, only made 21 of them. 21, wow. Of sleds. Yeah. That's a real big hood. Does that mean there's a real big engine underneath? Or? 440. 440, yeah. yeah. Nice, and racing cat. Got a 76 Snow Pro. Nice. Yeah. That's one of the cooler looking sleds ever to be on the snow, I think. Yeah. And then the Husky. Yeah, yeah. Of course, the RV. It's the new RV that they raced in 75. Nice, those were awesome. Then the Snow Cruiser, which was a repeat of 500, which, as far as I know, there's only four of those in existence. Four of those, wow. That's amazing. There's one in uh, the Brunswick, I understand. I've seen that one. And I understand there's one up in Peterborough where they came from. And I don't know if the one's still in New Jersey or not, but there was one down there. Nice. We had one like this when I was a kid. It was the consumer model, though, not the Starfire. That was fast. Even the consumer model, the 250, was really fast. They're going to uh, do the uh, the awards. The tr they're going to award the trophies here in a few minutes. And everyone's going to go on a trail ride. That's a good spot right there. Yep. The sun's just right as long as they go now. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, if you're just tuning in, we're waiting for the award ceremony. We're in Newport Center, Vermont, the uh, Country Riders Snowmobile Club. 
has put on a vintage snowmobile show. These are some of the sleds and the turnout. Considering how cold it is today and it's a first time event, they've got an excellent turnout. In a few minutes here, or a few moments, I don't know when exactly, but they're going to be doing a, handing out the trophies. And then uh, a lot of these folks are going to be going on a trail route in a nine mile loop. And once she's finished handing out the trophies, I'm going to uh, see if I can run out on that trail a little ways and get some drive-bys of all these cool vintage sleds. So yeah, we're just waiting for it to come around on a guitar. And if you know that song reference, put it in the comments. Here we go. Cold start this morning, but it's a great turnout. Well, kind of an experiment, you know, first, first time doing this. Thank you, know, Trent. Thank you. Thank you. First award that we have, uh, we have is for the oldest sled, and it happens to be the oldest rider. Oldest <laughs> sled. Reggie Field, the Larry Snow Traveler. Hey Reggie! <laughs> That's a twofer. Oh, we got two trophies. Oldest, oldest, oldest. Oldest sled and oldest rider. The next award is for most unique. That goes to Laura Gavlin, the 1985 Manta. Nice. Come on, looking over here, girls. Give us a wave. <laughs> Kodak moment right there. <laughs> the next award is for best in show. It goes to Ray Peranto for a 73 rough. Yes. Where is he? He's a, here he is. Congrats. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, words, Harry. Yeah, speech. Speech. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, man. Yeah, thanks. Right here. Get her a picture right next to it. Get the ride organized. A quick nine mile loop around. Just around and come back. Right back here. We've Still got food going, help yourself. Appreciate again everybody coming out. Hopefully we'll do this again next year. Uh, we should probably thank all the volunteers too that came out and put this together and put on the food and everything. Thank you very much, Country Riders. Thank you. Cool deal. All right, so I'm gonna make my way over to where they'll be driving by. A lot of nice modern sleds here today too of course we're right on the trail so that actually works out pretty good if people are going by they can stop and wander over and check out the activities so yeah if you're just joining us we're at a vintage snowmobile show and they're about to go for a ride I'm gonna come out here on the trail where they're gonna be passing by Try to get a photo opportunity. Get a Kodak moment, if you will. Hopefully this is where they're coming and not over there. If not, I'm skunk. But. <coughs> so I believe they're gonna be coming through here. If not, I'm gonna have to get over there real fast. So yeah, this is a nice event. Uh, the Rupp has his vote. Skip Estes, thank you for weighing in on that. Yeah, that is a sweet ride. Uh, in fact, if you guys watch the uh, Vintage Snowmobile podcast every Thursday night, every Thursday night, uh, Ray Parento has been on there with that sled before and after. Uh, as far as the details of that restoration, it's an amazing sled he's got there, and he is very much worthy of that uh, Best of Show award. 
So I can hear them firing up their sleds. It may be a few minutes before they all come by here, but <coughs> I want to be ready for them. I'll try to en entertain you as best I can with stories and anecdotes and dirty little limericks. Or maybe clean little limericks, I don't know. I'm trying to keep this family-oriented show. So I guess there'll be no stories about the man from Nantucket. So yeah, so thank you guys for waiting here with me. We're going to have a drive-by in a few minutes of a whole lot of vintage sleds. It's going to be worth the wait. And I thank you for hanging out with me on this. Yeah, and again, in case you're just joining us, we're at the uh, Vintage Snowmobile Show here in Newport Center, Vermont, in the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont. The Country Riders Snowmobile, show, Snowmobile Club is putting on this vintage show. And it's been a wonderful time, considering it's quite a few degrees below zero this morning. I think it's warmed up some since, but when I showed up here, uh, the thermometer in my car was saying 20 below zero. Thankfully, it's sunny out and not windy, so I've not been cold. And by the looks of everybody moving around here, I don't think they're super cold either. As long as you're dressed for it, it's really not too bad. Uh, but this is their first time event, their first time doing this event. They weren't quite sure what to expect. Uh, and considering how cold it is, it was a good turnout. Um, a lot of modern and vintage sleds, because of course modern sleds were right on the trail, so a lot of people are stopping by as they're trail riding to check out, see what all the all the fuss is about. And it turns out it's 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 a really nice event. Uh, we were just looking at some nice sleds. They had the award ceremony. Oh uh, yes, uh, want to plan for that next year, Jeff Carr. Absolutely, especially if you're in the area. So if you're thinking about that, Jeff, and anyone else who is thinking about attending this next year, uh, just look for the Country Riders Snowmobile Club Facebook page. Um, and friend that page, like that page, and um, just keep an eye on it as this time of year rolls around next year uh, to see what kind of a date. And you can also uh, message them and find out, you know, any kind of details as far as, you know, if they've planned it yet as far as a date or anything. Here's a drive-by right here. And yeah, it definitely will be worth attending this next year because I would imagine it would be even bigger and better uh, because now people know about it. It's on the map now. And um, I'm doing what I can as a friend of the club to try to get the word out, give this a little bit of promotion, make a little noise for it. I appreciate you guys watching that and tuning in. I don't know about you, but I like to see footage of a good vintage snowmobile show, whether it's local or anywhere else. Uh, it's just cool to see what people are doing in the vintage snowmobile space. Uh, and if you're like me, hopefully you enjoy viewing that as well, which is why I do this. I, I do it for my own enjoyment, but uh, thankfully other people enjoy it too. So we've got a bunch of modern sleds fired up. I'm sure they're firing up those vintage sleds too. I expect them to start coming through here before too long. I hope I'm on the right trail. They might be going that way. There's a trail just off in the other direction. Oh, was that Moxie I was looking at earlier? <coughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I've had a tickle in my throat lately. Every winter, just the dry, dry um, air tickles my throat, I guess. Oh, you're very welcome, Pete. Pete Ayer says, thanks for being there. Yes, Corey Munson, we are in Newport Center, Vermont. Uh, Northeast Kingdom of Vermont, the uh, Country Riders Snowmobile Club has just put on their first annual Vintage Snowmobile Show. And uh, we were attending the show, walking around, getting interviews, looking at sleds. Here comes the first Vintage Snowmobile right now. Hopefully he's going to turn down this trail, which would say that I'm on the right trail. Uh, they just had the award ceremony a minute ago, and now they're going to have a uh, ride. And they're all going to drive by me here, assuming I position myself in the right spot. There's another trail that goes off that way. Hopefully that's not where they're going. Uh, if it is, though, I can get over there pretty quick. I uh, will miss some of the drive-bys, but... And I'm going to wave to them and see if I can get some waves back. 
Now this first sled, if it's the one I think it is, is a 64 Polaris Snow Traveler. He won uh, the oldest sled in show and the oldest exhibitor in the show. Uh, I think he's 83 years old and he still works full time. Real nice guy. I had a chance to interview him. Oh, Jared Ellis is watching from Idaho. Thank you so much, Jared, for joining in. We appreciate that. And uh, I see sleds coming here. And they, I think they'll be riding by me here momentarily. I hope I'm in the right spot. If not, I can get over to the other side real quick. Well, let's get closer. See where they're going. Okay, so that's the organizer. She would have told me if I was in the wrong spot. I'm hoping. Uh, Minnesota. Corey Munson is hoping we'd say Minnesota. I bet you guys have your share of events down there, too. Or over there. Alright. I want to find out if I'm in the right spot here. So they're coming down here, right? They're coming this way? Yep. Wonderful, thank you. All right, so confirmation. All right, let me go get into the position again here. <coughs> All right, I'm assuming the position. And we have confirmation they're gonna be coming this way. Thank you guys for hanging here waiting with me. Get a few modern sleds here to warm things up. Cool. Jeff Facker from Central Minnesota. Well, thank you very much for the compliment. And Steve Dunlay watching from Ottawa, Canada. Yeah, thank you guys so much for joining in. And if you are just joining us, we're at a vintage snowmobile show. They're about to have a ride. They're going to be all riding past me here in just a moment. We're just waiting for them to get organized. And it should be very soon because I'm seeing if you look past I don't know if you can see through these trees but there's a bunch of them in, in the process of lining up for a ride this might be one right here okay here we go first vintage rider Here's that 1964. Yeah, he's 83 years old. That's the oldest sled of the show and the oldest exhibitor. He won two trophies. Here's some more. Pantera. Another Pantera, Mrs. Pantera. <laughs> I think they wanted to hit the throttle rather than wave, but that's all right. I was waving at all of them. I know how it is with the throttle, and I'm sure you do too if you're watching this. Uh, Greg Prue watching from Woodbury, Minnesota. Thanks us for the video. You're all very welcome, and thank you for joining us. I don't know if that's all the vintage riders. It might be all the ones that are going anyway. See, some of them have multiple sleds here, and of course you can only ride one sled. Yeah, that might be it. So I'm going to go walk around and look at some sleds and get what footage I can here. And eventually I'll wrap it up, but I want to try to milk this live podcast for all I can. So yeah, this is where we are on OS 29. Got our MASH sign here. Who used to watch that TV show MASH with that sign? I call that a MASH sign. Got all these sponsors here. And uh, yeah, this is where we are. 
Well, you're very welcome, Jeff. Thank you for viewing. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here comes somebody. All right, so let's go back and look at the sleds that are left behind. Now, the sleds that are left behind, they're free for the taking, they're saying. I may have that wrong, though. Hey, here she is, the organizer, organizer of the event. How's it going? All right, so these are the ones that are left. We've got some modern sleds taken off. Yeah, let's take a look here at the sleds that are behind. Got some modern sleds on their way. So yeah, let's do a little walk by here. So this is best in show right here. 1973 Rump Magnum 440. Belongs to Ray Peranto. That is a sweet sled. He restored that himself. You probably saw the video I did with him about that on the podcast a little while back. That sled has come a long way. Oh, he dropped his sign here. I was trying to pick it up, but I can't reach it. Check this out. Take a look at this uh, John Deere Cyclone. I never did catch up with the owner of that, but it's all right. You don't know who owns a Cyclone, do you? Do you own the Cyclone, either of you? No. No? All right. That's a sweet ride, huh? Yeah. A little Polaris action over here. Now that TX in the back, that 440, we had a 250 version of that when I was a kid. That's what I was riding was a t when I was a teenager. And I did not have the maturity to ride such a machine. Surprised, it's a miracle I'm still alive after using that, but sure had some fun with it. Hey, Michael Carvela. How you doing? And Alden Banks, viewers of the podcast. I remember Michael uh, Carvela came on the podcast not too long ago. Got some Elans over here. Remember these from back in the day? These things would go just about anywhere. This one too. Cool deal. All right. So yeah, I think I'm about to wind it down. But I thank you for tuning in both to, both to the earlier podcast I did as well as uh, this one here with the award ceremony and the drive-by. Good times all around. Thank you for viewing. Oh, uh, Skip Esty says, watching from Southern Massachusetts. Wishes he was here. Yeah, and if we do this next year, Skip, uh, it's right up I-91. If you're in Southern Massachusetts. Uh, oh, C-71 Elan, first sled his dad got, Alden Banks. Yeah, this will, since you made a comment, we'll take another look at these Elans. Just to take you down memory lane. So there you go, all the banks. You can hear the commentary back there. That's pretty funny. Yeah, I'm not gonna repeat it, but that was pretty funny. All right, so I'm really gonna close it out this time. Thank you, everyone, for viewing. Appreciate it. Hope you're having a good day, a good winter. Hope you're able to get some snow time on your snowmobile, whether it's trail riding, yard riding, or whatever is available to you. 
Hope you can do it and uh, do catch up with us Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, right here, right at this spot uh, for the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast. Thanks, guys. Have a wonderful day. We'll catch you on the other side. Hello, everyone. This is Rob and Mike. How are you doing today, Rob? I'm doing good. Mike, yourself? Very well. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Now, uh, today, we're going to be talking about AMSOIL. And uh, in a few moments, we're going to show you how you can get the deepest discounts, free shipping, and free gifts when you order your AMSOIL products through us. But first, I'm going to ask Rob to give you a quick description of what AMSOIL is and why you should consider using AMSOIL products in your motorized vehicles. Thanks, Mike. AMSOIL is 100% synthetic oil. Everybody uses AMSOIL for a different reason. Some people like the benefits that AMSOIL is warrantied for 25,000 miles or one year. The reason we can do that is because AMSOIL doesn't oxidize. It doesn't form the usual carbons, gum, sludges like petroleum oils do. That's why we can keep it in the engines longer. Petroleum oils never do wear out. They oxidize themselves. That's why they have to be changed at 3,000 kilometers. And AMSOIL likes the benefit that you only have to change the oil once a year. That saves some money. Some of the people like the benefit of AMSOIL is it's a slipperier type lube. By having a slipperier type lube, it cuts down friction drag. By less friction and drag, engines run 20 to 50 degrees cooler, better gas mileage. Now, AMSOIL says 25% more protection than the industry requires is in the AMSOIL bottles. My average customer gets about 10% increase in gas mileage. That's a big savings. Yeah. And by cutting down friction and drag, for every 10 degrees you cut down the friction and drag, doubles the life of the engine. So by having the engine run cooler, it makes it last longer. Some people like the benefit of the range of the AMSOIL. AMSOIL's flash point is 425 degrees, and it pours at 50 below zero. Wow. If you ever tried petroleum oil when it's 10 below, it turns to the honey. And yeah. in the summertime, petroleum oil thins out, and once, once it thins out, that's when it starts breaking down. So AMSOIL's an all-season oil, can give you better gas mileage, longer engine life, less maintenance. It ends up being cheaper over a year's time running AMSOIL than it is petroleum oils. That's amazing. That's amazing. And AMSOIL is, is available for pretty much any motorized vehicle, uh, any from, anything from lawn equipment, cars, trucks, boats, ATVs, motorcycles, snowmobiles. Yep, yep. And a lot of people phone me up and say, well, what's the benefit of our gear loop? Exactly what I told you about the engine oil. It pours in cold weather. It runs cooler, makes the equipment last longer. And they say, well, what's the benefit of the small engine? Same thing. Makes the engine run cooler, last longer, better performance. So it saves on all the applications that AMSOIL has available. Wonderful, wonderful. So yeah, let's uh, let's talk now. Uh, hopefully, this has convinced people uh, to think about maybe joining us in the AMSOIL experience. Let's talk about some of the discounts and free shipping and how that all happens. I'm going to pop a, a graphic on the screen, and uh, yeah, by all means, if you want to talk talk people through how this preferred customer program works, AMSOIL has a number of different programs. One of our main ones is a catalog customer, where somebody can order directly out of our catalog. If they order out of the catalog, they order hundred dollars worth. AMSOIL will ship it right to their house. But our best program is our preferred customer. For only $10 for six months, you become a first customer, you save 25% on all the product. You order $100 worth, they're going to give you free shipping. Um, you don't have to order a whole case. You can mix and match. Say you want four bottles of small engines, seven bottles of 5W30, and a couple of gear loops. You can mix and match. You can order one bottle at a time if you want. There's no minimums, no maximums. By being a preferred customer, you save over 25% on all the products you're going to buy. Amsoil sends you extra gifts, uh, a $5 gift certificate on your birthday, $5 when you renew, renew your account and stuff like that. So it's a good way to save on some of the products you want to buy. For sure, for sure. Yeah, it's an incredible value. And this is the, the deepest level of discount that anyone can get when ordering Amsoil. Is that correct? It is. It is. Wonderful, wonderful. So let's take people through the step-by-step the -step experience of, of placing an Amsoil order. Then that would include signing up for the preferred customer discount, or sorry, preferred customer program so they can receive those deepest levels of discount. So let's go to the website. This is what the website's going to look at look like. These are some screenshots. If you once you go to Amsoil.com, there's a link in the description, or you can just type that into a browser, Amsoil.com. This is the page you land on at the upper corner of the page there, you see how I've circled in red. That is the link to click, the Join Now link. That will take you to the Preferred Customer Program page where you can take advantage of all of these discounts and free shipping and everything that we've just been talking about. This is what that page looks like. In the lower right, you're going to click Join Now. This will pop up. You select the duration you'd like, whether it's six months or 12 months, and click Add to Cart. Now, once this, this uh, pop-up goes away, you'll be back on the main page. and the upper left, you'll see where I've got that red arrow. It says Shop. Now you can start shopping for products and on your very first order, you're going to get these discounts and the free shipping as long as it's over hundred dollars. You'll get all of these benefits right away. So once you click shop, it's going to take you to uh, some product, the product page. There's different types of oils, lubricants, so on and so forth. For the benefit of this exercise we're doing now, I'm just going to click motor oil. It shows different types of motor oil. Let's click gasoline. Now this takes us to an item. It's uh, their synthetic motor oil. 
and you can see the item there and there's choices for different viscosities but take a look at the price let's take a closer look let's zoom in uh but if you've joined the preferred customer program first you're going to automatically get the deepest levels of discount that's what we're looking at here you're saving three dollars and eighty cents on that quart of oil instead of paying 16.29 you're now playing paying at 12.49 for that quart of oil that is the deepest level of discount you can possibly get and then uh, you just add the, the the quantity that you'd like you select any other items that you're thinking about add them to the cart and once you uh, click add to cart for the final time you're going to see this come up at the top of the screen it's going to show your items and your your um the total that you're at so far <coughs> pardon me and then now uh, you just click view cart in the upper right and that'll take you to your cart uh take a close look here at the upper right that blue box shows that you're getting free shipping you're eligible for free shipping on this order because it's over a hundred dollars that little yellow box shows that you've got the preferred customer membership on your order that gives you the deepest levels of discounts for the next six to 12 months and then below that you've got the, the items that have been selected i just for the exercise here i selected nine quarts of this signature series but that brings us up over a hundred dollars for the free shipping we're saving 34 dollars and 20 cents and if you're ready to to finish you click check out now and that takes you uh to this screen here if you haven't signed up with an Amsoil account at this point, just click in the lower right to create an account, create a new account. It's going to ask you for some basic information, a name and those types of things. Now let's take a closer look. You'll see this gray shaded box. This is a very important box. This is going to ask you if someone has referred you to Amsoil. And if so, please enter my name. My name is Mike Lapierre. It's spelled right there on the screen for the correct spelling. And also the referral number, 304-555-94. That's how um, you make sure that Rob and I get credit for this. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I have signed up for Amsoil under Rob. So when you order using this referral number, Rob and I both benefit. So if you enjoy these podcasts that we're doing, this is a wonderful way to support the podcast because when you order uh, using this referral number, Rob and I both benefit. And the commissions I make go directly toward offsetting the cost of doing this pod these podcasts. So I thank you in advance for that, for using my referral number. I very much appreciate it. Uh, and once you've done that, you just go into the next screen to enter your payment information and you're done. Now, once you've entered, once you've placed your order that's over $100, uh, and that, that order includes your Amsoil Preferred Customer Program, you are now eligible to get a free DVD from myself. Now, this is going to be either a muscle car DVD or a vintage snowmobile DVD. Uh, use the email address on the screen, wkspodcasts at gmail.com. Send me an email. Let me know which email. I'm sorry. Let me know which DVD you would like me to send you, the muscle car or the uh, uh, vintage snowmobile DVD, and I'll get that right out to you. As you're typing in that, that email in the subject line, be sure and type in capital letters, free DVD requests, so it stands out as I'm checking my email, and we'll get that right out to you. So I guess the last thing, Rob, that we wanted to talk about is... Uh, if someone is considering Amsoil as a business opportunity. Um, yeah, yes. If anybody has a retail or a commercial account and they would like to buy directly from Amsoil, just send Mike a line. He'll show you how to set up and you can buy directly from Amsoil. But if you are interested in starting your own part-time business, a part-time business that can grow into a full-time income, Mike and I will show you the Amsoil marketing plan. Amsoil has a large selection of products that cover almost every application. So it doesn't matter if you're into snowmobile, boating, or ATV, and or, or hot rods. We have an oil for every application. It's a fun type business that I really enjoy doing. Where else can I go and have fun and make money doing it? And Mike and I are here to help you all the way along if you need any help on how to promote or, or to find new accounts. We're here to help you. For sure, for sure. So when you sign up under that uh, that number, this 304-555-94, you're getting Rob and I as a team. Now, Rob has been doing Amsoil for 40 years. Can you believe that? 40 years. So he knows every aspect of this business and he knows all of the ins and outs of the products. So he'll be able to help you with any kind of product questions or any kind of questions to show you the different business models that you can do with Amsoil. And then the other thing that you get when you sign up under me is I've got a strong background in social media. So if you need some coaching on how to generate Amsoil leads using Facebook and YouTube, I'm happy to coach you with that when you sign up under Rob and I. Uh, you get both of us as a team uh, to help you, to coach you, to support you, whatever you need to get you, get you off and running with this business and having fun with it. it like Rob said, it's enorm an enormous amount of fun. If you're like Rob and I and you enjoy going to any kind of you know boat shows, car shows, motorcycle shows, snowmobile shows, anything with a motor, you like going to those shows, those events, those races, this is a great way to turn that into a, 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 a income opportunity for you. Yes, yes. And just by wearing my Amsoil hat at one of these events, people come up and ask me about Amsoil. People don't, people don't know where to buy it, and I'm there to help them, show them where they can buy the products. Perfect, perfect. Well, cool, cool. Well, this is great. Uh, any final thoughts, Rob, before we wrap it up? Amsoil's a fun business. Amsoil's been around since 1968. You know, it was the first synthetic oil to be AI approved. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And that's very early in the game, too, isn't it? Yes. For sure. 
Well, good. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for viewing. Hopefully, we've gotten you excited as excited as we are about the Amsoil products. We'd love it if you could enjoy if you could join us either uh, as someone who uses the Amsoil products or to join the Amsoil team uh, as a business opportunity. And we thank you so much for viewing. Have okay. a great day. You have a good day.